have given my introduction already and Nautil has also introduced me. So, uh, I'll start with the presentation. As uh, I work with Dreamer Lab, and Dreamer Lab is the largest fantasy sports platform in India. We have over 250 million registered users. Providing best in class user experience is our topmost priority. And we continuously work towards providing a direct good experience to our users. As mobile apps scales, there is a daunting challenge of maintaining meaningful engagement to the user. Today I will show you how an intelligent in app present system can help to transform a passive user to an engaged user. So first let's discuss what are the challenges are faced by applications when they scale. So when we scale, we had more and more features to our application. And with every new feature, there is a bunch of information that the user has to consume. And as the user has to consume more and more information, it's easy for them to actually start overlooking key features that you want them to actually interact with. They may abandon tasks. They may not complete the task, may actually uh, leave the application in between. Or they will miss the valuable part of the application. And it is important as an app developer and in, in respect to the business that the user is engaged. They must be exploring the uh, every part of the application so that our business is actually healthy. So there is another problem. Without tailor guidance, users may sometimes get confused or feel overwhelmed. And they may actually uh, abandon the entire application, which may actually uh, hurt us by having higher challenges. And often an app goes with one side fits all experience, which does not resonate with all of the users. User may feel that the app is not meeting my individual needs. And if that happens, then user may stop using the application, which is very bad for us. So these are the challenges where the uh, basically app places when this game. Now, how to solve this problem? Uh, the one way of solving this problem is to actually guide user uh, to contextual and subtle prompts. We can use these prompts to actually guide user to complete the task, help them to actually what they should do the next. Or maybe we can guide them to actually interact with some key feature or encourage exploration. The practice of guiding user through, through this contextual and subtle prompts is referred as nudging. Uh, these nudges can be in the form of notifications, modems, tooltips, pop-ups, banners, or coach marks. Now, you may be wondering, so these notifications, modems, and tooltips are very easy to implement, right? You don't require a lot of uh, uh, effort to build this. But let me present you some scenarios. So let's say that there is a use case where, uh, uh, let's take an example of an e-commerce application. Now in that e-commerce application, uh, you have introduced a new feature as grocery delivery. And you want your users to actually use that feature. But users somehow are, are not interacting with that feature. Now one way to actually guide users to interact with the new feature is that show them a nudge and ask them to actually click on this and go to the new feature. Show them what the new feature is all about in the nudge itself. It can be more tension, right? And that's very easy to implement. You can do it because you know that there is a new feature. Sorry, because of the construction, can you use Hello. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I was talking about uh, these nudges are easy to implement. Uh, the, also, you know that this, this is the new feature that we have added in our, added in our application and uh, uh, you just present a nudge whenever user lands on the application. This is very fairly simple use case. Uh, but let's talk about some complex use case. Now, uh, let's say that your product manager comes to you and uh, they ask you to actually uh, 
discuss a use case where the users are dropping after doing some interaction with the application and user does the exact interactions and then after that they drop now this is a kind of a complex problem because now you cannot just present the nudge to the user because now you have to actually maintain what interaction the user has done and after doing that exact same interaction you have to present a nudge now you can you can say that okay thik, no problem i can implement this there is no problem it will take two or three days and i will implement this now what these requirements will not stop coming as we are as a mobile app scales your product product manager will keep on coming with these requirements now the another requirement can be now there is a uh, let's say in the e-commerce example only now there is a offer that you want to show and that offer needs to be shown only when user does a specific kind of interactions with the application now if you see that for the developers for the product managers this is the new use case but for the developers it is the same use case that we that we discussed before in this case also we have to maintain the interaction now if these kind of requir requirements keeps on coming then the implementation part becomes messy now i will discuss what are the problems with the implementation so whenever we do changes in the application for all all every new requirement that the product manager comes up with we have to go through the software development life cycle and which which itself is a time consuming and then we have to release the application on the play store and the app store after releasing then our product manager will sit fingers crossed till the users adopt the application because the new nudge implementation that we did in the latest version the users which are on the lower version will not be able to actually see that and that can affect the business because what if the offer is that we want to show to the user is live for only 3 days what if the offer is live for only 2 days then in that case the business impact is huge and we don't want that and also when there are multiple requirements of this kind what we do in the implementation we write lot of if else blocks when we say that a uh, interaction this is the first interaction that user is doing now go to the second now third and now present a nudge this if else blocks and later on if new interaction has come up then you write again a different kind of code and all of these nudges are in your code base which is basically your tech data and then one day your engineering manager will come and see that this code we are not using we have to remove this that that is an additional effort and the another problem is that once we take live our application there is a little room for customization you cannot do any customization whatever you have implemented that is the final and that will be shown to the user so what if i tell you we can actually avoid all of this we don't need to go through a software development life cycle we don't need app release we don't care about tech debt and we can do a uh, customization so introducing intelligent nudging system so through this nudging system we are trying to solve the problem that we discussed it has basically three components a state machine for user journey management a server driven ui for dynamic ui and rule engine to control the behavior of the nudge in the upcoming slides we will basically go through all of these component and try to understand the problem that we just discussed how these components solve those problems we will do this by answering these three questions where what how that means when to present a nudge what to show in a nudge and how to show that nudge going into the first component of state machine which we are using for user journey management let's first try to understand what is user journey so 
user journey is basically the interaction made by user to reach to a certain end end point and tracking this user journey is very important because we want to our nudge to be meaningful and to add this meaning to the nudge it has to be presented at the right moment of the user journey so like the example that we discussed for the e-commerce application the use case was we have to show a nudge when user does the exact kind of interaction now let's try to understand more about user journey with this uh, uh, an example application this is the two page example app where the first page is basically a product listing page second page is the product details page and there is a section of similar products in the product details page and uh, in the detail page there is two button interested and not interested so basically there are like how many possible interactions can be you can click on the product listing page go to the product details page and then user can click on similar products and then interact with not interested or interested now this is the an example journey where what we want to do is we want to show a nudge when user clicks on product listing and then goes to product details and then user clicks on similar product item and after that the user clicks on interested or not interested in that case we have to show a nudge so this is the user journey that we want to follow but there is there is some a one catch here we don't want to show a nudge because there is a interested or not interested buttons available after product detail also so user can interact with that also but in that case we don't want to present a nudge we only want to present a nudge when user goes to a similar product detail item and then interacts with interested or not interested so we can do this by tracking our user journey so how do we track the user journey so usually most of the companies uh, block events whenever user interacts with the uh, application so we can use the same event and um, in every event we can add additional information to add meaning uh, more meaning to our uh, journey so basically just logging an event and see that product has interacted with product list or like uh, user has interacted with interested will not add any meaning but let's say if you add an additional payload to the event like which product id the inter uh, user interacted with and at what time the user interacted with will add more meaning so we can add we can have event and uh, we can add more meaning by adding additional parameters to the event now let's see how state machine basically uh, works in this case so every state in the state machine represents a unique step of a user journey and the transition from one state to another state happens when a specific kind of event is triggered and you can also by to add more meaning to the transition you can add a condition in the state machine so for example you want that or interaction with the certain product only then you can show a nudge so you can add a condition here and the state machine transition will happen only when that condition is met and at the end step you trigger a nudge so let's understand more about this state state machine transition so this is our initial state which is a product listing page our state machine is a, is at the zero state and it waits for this event to be uh, occurred product selected as soon as the product selected is occurred state machine checks if there is a condition and after that condition is satisfied it moved to the next state which is the product details page now it waited there for the next event to occur as soon as the next event is occurred where the similar product is selected now the state machine is moved to the next state which is the second state it waited there and then not interested press play uh, event happened and then it moved to the end state and at the end state it basically trigger a nudge so with the help of state machine you see we are able to actually 
track the exact journey that you want. This is the actually magic of using state machine here. Now how do we build this state machine? Now uh, in Dream 11 we have actually built our own uh, JSON based DSL uh, through which we can configure this use exact user journey on the server. And we have our client SDK which basically fetches those configuration and converts that those configuration to state machine and runs that state machine on device. This is also a very important thing because now when you run that state machine on user device, you are not dependent on server. You are you don't have to interact with the server, and uh, due to which actually you, the server cost reduces. And also, you can that state machine basically needs only event for the state transition. Now, and all the information it requires is already has got through the configuration from the server. Now, after that, let's say your device goes offline you don't need to worry because as soon as long as the events are happening on the devices your state machine will transition and as soon as uh, end state is uh, reached the nudge will be triggered and the third most important at Dribbler we actually care a lot about performance so it is much faster because you are using your user's device you are not relying on the server So this is the DSL that we have actually uh, uh, built to build a state machine. Here if you see, uh, this is the event, sorry, this is the event product card paste and uh, which says that and zero is the state. So as soon as the product card press event trigger, the state machine moves from zero to one denoted by transition two. And there is this filter section. In the filter, you can specify the condition. For example, in our the example that we have been discussing, you can specify that you want to check for product ID, and you can say that product ID should be equal to this or product ID should not be equal to this. You can add a lot of arithmetic operators. Here, the one of the operator that here we are using is and, but you can add other arithmetic operators also. And the second illustration basically shows the uh, states of the state machine which is like product card pressed, product details not interested and uh, product details interested. So this is how we actually build the state machine. Let's, let's talk about the second component uh, of the intelligent nudging system which is server driven UI for dynamic UI which is kind of a hottest topic right now in React Native world. A uh, lot of company are working on this. So at Driveler also we are working on this and uh, we have built our own DSL to configure server uh, UI from the server. Now why do we need server driven UI? I think I don't have to talk more about it because all of you know like what uh, advantages server driven UI brings. But in our context, we want th there was one problem that we discussed that we when we go live on the application, we like real-time customization and that problem is solved by server driven UI. You can actually add dynamic content, configure styles, real-time customization and we have a SDK to which actually fetches this configuration from the server and converts that configuration to a UI. So this is our DSL. This is very opinionated. You may find different kind of DSL companies are using but in our use case, we try to keep it simple. So this in this DSL we have type which basically specify the UI element. Uh, there is a style which specifies the style of the UI element, data which is an input to that UI element, and children is basically the same nested structure structure which are child of that UI element. So on the second illustration is where we actually we uh, I show you what values it could have. So here in the second illustration we are basically showing a bottom sheet which has a view and there is a simple text in it. So I will go into the demo where you can actually see how that uh, works. So yeah, the next part 
component of the state machine is uh, the rule engine. Now, why do we need rule engine first? So, I I talked about an example where like you may get a lot of requirements from the product managers. Like, uh, you want to show a nudge on exact same journey, but it may happen that multiple journey can come to a single interaction point, right? And that interaction point can have a nudge. Now, and basically there are multiple journey, means multiple nudges can be presented on same interaction point. And, and when that interaction happens, your state machine will try to actually show a nudge. But since multiple state machine will try to show a nudge, there is a risk, there is a risk condition. Now how to solve that risk condition? So we have a rule engine which governs the working of a state machine, which specifies how the state machine operates. So there is an another example like we user is doing some interaction, you are showing the nudge every time the user does that interaction. Now imagine if you are using some app and you every time you do something, click on a button and you are present with the bottom shape you feel frustrated, right? And that is not a good user experience. So that is a spam and with the help of rule engine we can prevent that spam. And sometimes, like I said that, you want to store context to be your nurse to be your nurse to be more meaningful. And that context your state machine will store by the rule engine. The rule engine will guide the state machine what context to store. And also, like let's say you want to show a nudge for only two days because your offers are valid for only two days and after that you don't want to show a nudge. So th this is a case of your nudge invalid after two days. Now that validity also can be handled by this rule engine. So there is a, there are three basic properties of the rule engine which can be used to control all of these challenges which is frequency which controls how many times a user can see this nudge. It can be in a one single app session, it can be a window, let's say you want to show nudge two times in seven days, three times in let's say ten days or every time in single app session. A priority which basically helps to decide which nudge to show when there is a rest condition and context, basically where to store, how to store the context to, to, for the nurse to be meaningful. This is the rule engine and this is the final output that our SDK gets from the server. Here if you see, there is this take transition variable key which basically helps to build state machine and uh, there is this CTI validity which actually helps to identify what is the validity of this nudge and there is this frequency which helps to actually define how many times the nudge has to be presented and there is this actions in that we have a template where we actually show where we have config configuration for server driven UI. So yeah, I think I've been talking a lot and enough with the theoretical explanations, let's jump to the demo. So for demo, we I'm going to use the same this application where uh, uh, there is a product listing page, uh, the second page is uh, product details page and there are interested and not interested buttons. So I talk about the setup first. So what we have here is that this the port that you are seeing. Is it visible? Yes. Yeah. So this is basically a local host server that basically serves the nudges to the application. 
and the application right now it's the server is not running so there are no nothing that are serving so let's open this app and open my file is working now user can actually go and browse this product listing page and user clicks on this and there is this product details page now what we want to do is we want to show an alert when user clicks or not interested or maybe interested let's let's take the case first of not interested nothing happened not interested click but nothing happened because there is no code written in the application we have not handled we have don't have any single line which handles the much implementation in the application all of that is actually configured from the server and since the server is not running the alert is not coming now let's run the server Close the application so that our app fetches the latest configuration from the server. Open the app and let's try our luck. You see, the result has been present. So I don't need to actually release new application. I don't need to actually do any changes in the application. I just need to. deploy the configuration on the server and you can your user can start experience experiencing the learn that you want them to show uh let's let's take another let's click on this interested now you can show different kind of nudge you can actually show on every interaction there is a capability to show different different kind of nudges now let let's take a, a little bit complex I use this. Now this is simple. Where you actually clicking on something and going and showing a touch. Okay. Now let's say you want to show a different kind of touch when user interacts with specific type of product. Where you want the user, whenever user uh, interacts with the specific product, you want them to redirect to something else. Now let's take an example. When user clicks on this second item. Now as soon as user interacts with not interested of the second item. You see a different kind of nudge. I do. I haven't done any changes in the application. These are entirely running from the backend, the server configuration, and the state machine is running on the device. Now, what this nudge is saying is that user has selected not interested for this product. Now, it is presenting the nudge to actually ask user to explore the other product. Now, user can actually click on this check now. And the app will take the user to the different the product that it clicked. Even the click actions are configurable from the server. We can configure what to do when user clicks on the button. So let's let's see the. Yeah. So this is the. This is basically the configuration that we are getting from the server. It has a key CTS, which we internally call our nudges as CTS. That is why, so don't get confused. And it is an array, so basically it shows how many kind of nudges are there. So this is the first nudge, and this is the second. Now let's say. Uh, I want to modify the content of nudge. So let's go to the first nudge, and this is the action which is which shows that which nudge to be shown when action interest is clicked. Now I want to actually modify something when user does not interest. So this is the copy that being shown when the user does not interest. Let's change this copy. We say that. we we'll try to show what it i will show better for us in the future we we'll try to show better notes in the future now just i just saved it now let's close the application and 
tag it so that we get the latest configuration from the server. Click on the item. Now let's, let's do one thing. Let's click on some other item here. And when user clicks on not interested, now you see, is it visible? Yes. The text changed, right? I don't need to do anything in the application. So, this is how we actually build our system and we have been using this in our production. We are going to So uh, this is about the demo. We have been using this in our production. We are going to open source this uh, in uh, under Trend Sports Lab. This is our open source organization. Uh, we have a lot of repositories. We are working on it. We have started maintaining the identity fast image. Uh, the people who are actually working with the identity must have known that the identity fast image is not uh, uh, is a widely used image caching and downloading library, but it's not maintained. We uh, are now maintaining it. And uh, we are going to open source this nudge uh, system on Big Sports Labs, and then you guys can start using it. Thank you.